what is up ladies and gentlemen namaste and welcome back to my youtube channel i'm going to react to vishnu shiva and brahma vedic explanation of who came first who came first between uh these three tell me what you think guys in the comment section down below you can add more information let's go so you don't have time to consume an entire podcast that's okay enjoy the highlights on trs clips make sure you subscribe make sure you hit that bell icon the link is down below so when guys. i was a kid uh, i watched a show called vishnu puran which we were tripping out over in the other room uh, <laughs> you know there was a beautiful show by b r chopra b r chopra's mahabharat uh, right and after that b r chopra's mahabharat show got done they had reruns of it until about 1998 maybe where they started airing vishnu puran Right. and i remember the whole country got very gripped to vishnu puran i remember yeah. being gripped to it as a kid right and then i rewatched i think the first two episodes later on in life when i rewatched them as an adult i realized whoa this show is extremely deep yes and i figured that there's no way the writers could have sat and had you know written but penned down these dialogues Completely. they had to have taken them from somewhere because the dialogues were too heavy right uh, that's also why the show may have may not have caught on as much as mahabharat or ramayan which are very simple stories yes yes i won't say simple stories but they're linear stories yeah yeah linear stories they're not philosophical like this yes so vishnu puran talks about the birth of the universe right. the birth of parabrahm which is god in general yes uh but from there i'd love for you to explain uh, it in brief you know where does vishnu brahm shiva fall into this birth of the universe theory right. and also why is there a hierarchy in terms of gods like why is it okay god then vishnu brahma mahesh right. then the devis then all the other gods then yes. indra etc etc what oh. is this logic there is a hierarchy i think that's a very good question and we a lot of people have these questions i had these questions you know when i started researching and um the confounding factor here is that different purans call different gods as supreme So in the Shiv Puran, you would find Shiva as the most supreme god, and whereas in the uh, Vaishnavite Purans, you would find Vishnu as the supreme god. Mm. So in terms of Bhagavatam, Krishna is the supreme god, mm. right? So I think there's some confusion there that happens in the mind of people. But if you want to understand the broad hierarchy, you know, and see, so it comes again. None of the Purans or any later scriptures have uh, anything to say which is different from the Vedas. So in the Rig Veda, there's this. purush sukta and this purush sukta talks about the adi purush who's the first person you know purush of course it's a it's a masculine term but it basically implies that this this is the first person in the universe and okay. it is from him that the entire creation comes mm. the purush sukta talks about another being emerging from the purush who starts the creation which is viraj so there you have the beginnings of the story of Lord Vishnu being presented as the Adi Purush, from whom emerges Brahma, who's Viraj, and from Brahma starts the rest of the creation. Now, if you go by the Shiv Puran uh, uh, descriptions, it's Shiva who's in, there in the beginning, and then he emerges as the Lingam of Fire. So, very interestingly, a lot of people worship Shiva Lingam, but they don't know what it means, right? So, the Shiva Lingam actually represents a Lingam of Fire. it's a pillar of fire and this pillar of fire suddenly emerges and there's brahma and there's vishnu and they don't know where it's coming from so both of them they decide to explore the ends of it so vishnu takes the form of a vara and brahma takes the form of a swan and he flies up and vishnu uh, digs deeper into the uh, lower half of it but none of them can find it find the end so finally they meet at the midpoint and that's when uh, shiva emerges from it that's called the ling udbhav shiva So lot, some of the southern temples have this depiction of Shiva emerging from the lingam. So that's where Shiva tells them that I am the supreme one and I created you. So there are different versions, but again, you know, a very beautiful point to understand is that all the Purans refer to different kalpas. So for this, I'll have to go a little sure. bit backwards into what a kalpa is and what sure, the timeline sure. is, right? So this universe is just according to our scriptures this universe is just one of the multiple universes so our scriptures actually talk about a multiverse this is not the only universe in the world earth is not the only place that is inhabited there's mil millions and millions of inhabited worlds out there wow and these uh, wow. so according to shrimad bhagavat puran there's a spiritual universe which is almost like a clear sky blue sky and on one corner of it there's this cloudy 
place which was the material universe it's one fourth of the entire portion like a quadrant like a quadrant mm-hmm. one quadrant is, is the material universe so okay. like dragon balls you have dragon balls <laughs> yeah. yes. anyway go on <laughs> so three fourths is the spiritual universe where krishna resides the vishnu forms reside uh, in the vaikunt planet and one fourth one quadrant is the um, material universe material creation i would say material realm mm. okay within this material realm there is a form of vishnu which is the karanodak shai vishnu okay this might get a little complicated no, go on, go on. but this is i mean this is the easiest way to understand okay there is this karanodak shai vishnu who is just lying in that material realm and every time he exhales there is a universe that pops out of his pores oh so there is millions of universes coming out of karanodak shai vishnu's pores okay each of this universe again has a form of vishnu inside it which is the karbhodak shai vishnu wow. from whom emerges brahma for that universe okay and that mm. brahma creates all the lokas within that universe mm. but okay. imagine that this entire universe exists only for one breath of this maha vishnu the karanodak shai vishnu wow so this entire process of creation by brahma of multiple yugas coming and going all of this is just a single breath mm. of mahavishnu <laughs> wow. that's how grand the vision is mm. so within this universe when brahma starts creating uh, he generally for our universe the story is told we don't know how it is for the other universes but for our universe so brahma has a life span of close to 311 trillion human years okay and currently do you know where we are right now so this is the 51st year of brahma <laughs> of our current brahma out, out of ha, no so that is in the human years okay. that is equal to 100 brahma years okay. okay so 100 brahma years is the life span brahma lives for 100 years okay so okay. we are at 51 out of 100 we are at 51 right mm. now so it's close to 155 trillion human years mm. wow. if you compute if you convert it in human years mm. and currently we are in the afternoon so we are in the seventh manvantar so each day of brahma within this year 100 100 uh, years of brahma each year has 360 days and night and each day is called a kalpa mm. okay so in this life span of brahma each kalpa has had different entities being created lord vishnu has appeared in different avatars it's not just the 10 main avatars that we know the various avatars that have happened these different beings wow. have come and gone and brahma has recreated you know everything again and again and again multiple times he's been doing it every day mm. every morning brahma starts creating and every night it gets dissolved again wow. every morning he starts afresh with some inputs from the previous experiences so uh each puran belongs to a different kalpa and in each kalpa because creation happens differently sometimes brahma emerges first sometimes vishnu emerges first and sometimes shiva appears first mm. that is why the stories are different mm. a lot of people don't understand this that the purans belong to different time periods mm. and in each kalpa the creation began in a different way mm. so for current uh, day of brahma which is the varaha kalpa vishnu puran was told narrated in this kalpa So Vishnu Puran actually is relevant for this kalpa. Mm. Lot of other Purans are telling stories that happened in the previous kalpas or future kalpas. Mm. Different time periods. Different time periods. Mm. So that is where the stories differ. But wow. primarily, it's Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh who are the holy trinity. Mm. They are the holy trinity of Hinduism, the three murti. They are the highest level of gods. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was it, guys. That was so. I I felt like my hair was going to pop because the the information there that was just being said in these few minutes was just a lot that was a lot of information and you was explaining that you can't really say you know who comes first like you know like Brahma comes first uh, Shiva or Vishnu no because they do come different in different timelines you know sometimes it can be Brahma sometimes it can be a uh, Vishnu sometimes it can be a uh, Shiva so it's different but he did you know explained it you know in in a very different way like you know the breath you know like whenever he's breathing out you know there is a formation and in that timeline there is also another vision that is in there who creates brahma and then brahma starts creating you know 
and in his day, his day span is like, you know, when when it's morning, it starts creating, and evening, it all disintegrates. It starts again the next day. That is just phenomenal, you know. I don't think you guys have heard anything like that, man. I know I haven't. You know, so this is just fascinating to me. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments section down below. I'm sure make sure to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell uh, so that I you'll be notified whenever I release a video. Much love to you guys. I appreciate you. Peace.